Steven, thanks for joining me today on the channel. It's been a long time coming. Um, I've been meaning to get you on here for several months, but you've been busy making multiple films and I've been in hospitals multiple times, so I haven't been able to uh, talk to you yet. But um, for those who are not aware of you or your work, especially the people that come to my channel and expect Japanese toy content, who are you and what do you do? Uh, I'm Steve Kostansky, a uh, writer, director, creature effects artist based out of Toronto, Canada. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've made uh, Psycho Gorman. Mom, Dad, I want you to meet Psycho Gorman, or PG for short. I will bathe in your blood. Don't worry. Be worried. The upcoming Frankie Frico. Connor had it all. Until things got Frico. Oh my god. We're gonna party hard and then we'll be on our way. Shamadu. And the upcoming Death Stalker uh, is another film I have on the way. I also did uh, a little movie called Manborg that seemed to do okay in Japan. Um, Father's Day, I co directed with my Astron Six friends. Uh, I did Leprechaun Returns for the Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, I've done a bunch of stuff. All genre stuff, all creature-heavy stuff. I love monsters, and I love putting monsters into all my movies because I like making them, and I like directing them on camera. So, yeah, that's my jam. Yes, your movies are very monster-heavy, and uh, there's a lot of tokusatsu vibes coming out of the films that I've seen of yours, and even your short films, but your uh, movie that I first like fell in love with completely was Psycho Gorman. And that is just a complete homage to Tokusatsu, at least uh, a, lo a lot of the creatures and uh, the action that was going on, a lot of the vibes. So it really, it really took that whole thing. And then like the nineties, like kid comedy, like weird, uh, like suburban type family vibe and kind of just smashed it together with a lot of gore and it was like an instant you know hit for me but uh so could you tell us a little bit more about psycho gorman and how you came up with uh the concept for that film yeah the film uh i mean it's definitely born out of my love of yeah like kind of 90s kid adventure movies but also my love of as a kid i was huge into power rangers of course which is like a gateway drug into tokusatsu type content for a lot of kids uh opened my eyes to uh specifically japanese creature design which i've always loved uh i grew up on yeah a pretty healthy diet of, of godzilla movies as well so uh like suitmation any kind of like creature suit performance i became fixated on as a kid and this movie is definitely an homage to that uh it's something I just felt like movies weren't doing in North America was embracing the unreality of uh, like creature suits and aliens and monsters and things. There's like this fixation on making everything as realistic as possible. And I guess what I love about uh, like Super Sentai stuff or Common Rider, monsters and Common Rider shows and movies is like there is a, a striving for realism, but there is also like an acceptance of the unreality of it, the kind of static nature of a lot of these creatures. And so I really wanted to lean into that with Psycho Gorman. So there's specifically like two scenes in the movie that are just packed with monsters that uh, tried to emulate that vibe of, uh, yeah, like Japanese uh, suit performance, suit design where uh they're very like bold and outlandish um but uh there's not a striving not so much a striving for realism as striving to be like striking and leave a strong impression yeah uh like the movie's basic premise is it's uh two kids uncover an ancient evil warlord in their backyard and go on weird adventures with them and a bunch of uh horrible shit comes out of that there's like monsters coming from other planets to get uh the creature who they they named psycho gorman and uh yeah there's lots of fighting and action and craziness so yeah. indeed uh it's it's also very it's a it's i would say like the whole vibe of the tokusatsu and then the uh, the kind of stuff you have in your movies 
are there's a lot of play, a lot of playful nature, a lot of fun being had, and I'm sure it's also a lot of very stressful work. But when you're watching it on screen, you get this sense of like, wow, this is just a lot of fun to create and make. And uh, Yeah, looks like well, it is. it's once once you have it all on screen, like once you're once I'm on set with these things, it despite the insane stress getting up to that point, it always becomes like the most fun environment because I'm just standing around a bunch of essentially like giant action figures and I'm just mashing them around. I feel like that is my whole reason for going into film was to just justify me still playing with toys, uh, even on a bigger scale. So every movie I make, I'm just like designing toys that I'd want to own as a kid and then Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to watch your films, and uh, of course, you know one of the first things that was recommended to me in my feed after I discovered Cycle Gorman was the toy commercial that I believe you had made of uh, Yes. plastic meatball figures. The ultimate evil has awoken. He is our last hope. The final battle has begun. Yes. And uh, it's such a great commercial, but these figures were like the first thing I had to find, but then I think they were sold out, like, or at least the ones that I wanted were sold out on the uh, website. <laughs> so eventually I was able to get one. Um, before I ended up actually getting one, I ended up meeting you here in Japan uh, during a special event, or was it your first time out here? It was just a random trip that uh, my friend Rufio set up. He was able to get like kind of a buddy pass system going where a bunch of us were able to fly out to Japan. He knew we all wanted to go. It's a trip we've been talking about for years. So a bunch of us got together and decided like, yeah, let's go spend, I don't remember what it was. It was at least like 10 days just out in Tokyo specifically. I mean, we decided to just hunker down there because there's so much to see in Japan. We thought like, You know, we might as well make the most out of Tokyo and then justify further trips down the road where maybe we go to Kyoto or Osaka or something like that. But yeah, so it was it was the last November, I think, we came out. And uh, yeah, it was the greatest trip of my life. It's the most fun I've ever had. And uh, yeah, we met up at the uh, Nope Cafe and had a great hangout. Yes, well, our mutual friend Ken, which uh, people that watch the channel are familiar with. Ken uh, owns Nope, and uh, yeah, we met up there and hung out. And um, the f you know, there's lots of toys around Nope, but like the first like interaction was us like just playing with toys on the table, like I think Jurassic Park toys and some other Yes. things. There was taco dinosaurs and <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the best place. I, I miss it so much. I, uh, my girlfriend Lisa and I fantasize about going back there and having those dinosaur tacos again. It, it's just like everything I want in a hangout spot is a no. <laughs> but um so we got to talking you know more and more about you know we have a share of share of love for some of the japanese films uh like uh, keita amamiya's films and godzilla films Oh, yeah. so Yeah, I definitely should should mention like Mechanical Violator Hakaider. yeah is a pretty huge PG influence. 
uh, though I think the designs of the creatures in the suits in that movie are just like the peak. And oh I yeah. Love it. Yeah. That that movie is pretty wild. If uh, it's it's available in the U.S., um, I think it, on Blu-ray. For if anyone that had yes. to see, check it out. Uh, so yeah, we got to talking, and I also do some work for a company called RX Nemesis, and um, I do like you know some design work, photography, help with produ production, and uh, we produce stuff. Um, typically, like these kinds of things, you know, soft vinyl toys of our own character IPs, but uh, we had a. Uh, you know, always wanted to do some licensed stuff, and the first thing that would ever pop in my head would be Psycho Gorman. <laughs> and um, I think uh, once, you know, this was brought up as a project idea, everyone was on board immediately. And um, when I brought it up to you, you seemed rather excited about it. So when I, when we talked about um, putting out a PG as Japanese Sophobie, and I know you didn't know a whole lot about uh, the whole process because you'd, you'd uh, done action figures, injection molded action figures, but it's a bit different doing the soft vinyl stuff. So what were your initial thoughts about that whole thing? I mean, I was excited the minute you suggested it. Uh, I mean, like vinyl figures to me are such a, like, I don't know, they're just such a cool thing that I felt like I would never have any kind of involvement in in any way like going to toy shows and stuff in canada like anybody that sold vinyl figures they're always like just prohibitively expensive it's like yeah. they're pretty like high-end toy in north america and so the prospect of getting a little pg that looks like that uh i just i had to say yes immediately it's like my films are very much uh to use a george lucas term a uh, very toyetic I feel like I design everything in a way, like I kind of like start at the toy and then work up to what the character is going to be on screen. Like I was trying to think in terms of like, what is this character I've designed like Psycho Gorman in his simplest form? Uh, would it be appealing to me if it was on the shelf at a toy store somewhere? Like would Kid Steve go and buy that thing? So I try to like start small start simple like what's like a good color scheme what's a good like kind of basic silhouette and build out from there so anytime there's the prospect of turning my characters into toys i feel like it's just them it's just a very natural progression that i'm right on board like i'm never going to have a confused reaction to somebody pitching me on making uh, a toy out of any of my characters because yeah that's I feel like that's ultimately where all of this is going. It's just I want all of them to be toys at some point. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Very excited, and the prospect of it of PG uh, becoming a like a vinyl Safu beam was just so uh, mind blowing to me. I had to say yes. We we were very happy that you did, and you know the the vinyl stuff being you know pr more pricey than let's say like a, an injection molded action figures. They're very limited quantities. You know they're they're expensive to produce and they're usually done by a handful of people. So uh, RX Nemesis, we've got very talented sculptors and painters and they have done amazing work with these. So uh, as you have behind you, we have um, the original version that we put out earlier this year. And uh, it was sold via lottery, which people that are not used to like the vinyl lottery system are completely like, it's kind of what? <laughs> I can't just put it in my cart and, and buy it. Like, you know, that's that's something that's like a, a product of the whole, like the limited nature of the vinyl toys. You, they have to have a lottery, otherwise they tend to sell out really quickly. Yeah. Um, but it can also be very confusing for people that want something that they have never really tried to enter into before. So uh, we have decided to, for the second time, uh, the second go around to make it a, just buy it now, add it to your cart, that way there's no confusion about it and we have this beautiful new color variant that's um, pretty sick which i will be showing with glamour shots in the actual cut here uh but yeah this this is like a translucent um purple violet color with uh like it's got a pinkish glitter and a metallic red scarring and he's got these like bone colored eyes it's it's a really cool color and when you see it compared, there's like a huge, a huge difference in the different types of color. You've got one very classic retro, and then one that's more 
almost movie accurate, especially like when he first appears in the darkness. Yes, yes, it definitely feels like when PG's meant to be a little bit scarier in the film. Definitely yes. like in the first first half of the movie, I feel like this this guy is very much broad daylight PG. <laughs> And the other one is very much like atmospheric dark warehouse PG, which is cool. It's like we got a we got a fun one and we got a scary one going. So. Yes, you have your meat stick, right? Your your original meat sword, and then we've got the new one. But yeah, I'm I have was very excited to have been a part of the team that helped produce these and manifest them into the world, and I'm happy that I have some of them and. Uh, I'm excited to get these out to the rest of the world, to the PG fans. And this version will be for sale in October. The, the links for all that will be in the description and all of that. Um, Sweet. But we're not done because you've been very busy on a couple other projects. And uh, yes. can you talk a little bit more about those projects. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got my next movie, Frankie Frico, is coming out. Keep an eye out. For that that's uh, a very fun wacky uh i wouldn't even call it a horror movie it's basically just like a full-on comedy absurd comedy with puppets and monsters and things uh, it looks like so basic, much fun. basic premise is this dorky guy is trying to spice up his life so he calls this party hotline hosted by a little goblin man and that unleashes hell into his house basically a bunch of uh little goblin creatures show up and just start terrorizing him and destroying everything and that's kind of just the setup of the movie. It goes to way crazier places that I don't want to spoil. Uh, it's super wacky and fun and very childish. It's a good like gateway movie, I feel like, for, for kids. Like there's pops of violence in it, but like it's pretty tame overall. I leaned more into like the home alone absurdity of it. Um, it's a very silly movie, but I, I love it. I love the little monster genre, specifically the like little troublemaker genre, subgenre of creature yeah. movies. Uh, like a big reference point was Ghoulies Go to College, Ghoulies Three. So, uh, if you have any taste for those types of movies, then this movie will be right up your alley. I'm very excited to see it when it comes here to Japan. All of you guys that are stateside will get to see it way, way faster than I will. But uh... Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't spoil the, especially the big twist at the end. There is a pretty substantial one that when I was watching it in Austin the other day, uh, there were people audibly in the theater going, what? So <laughs> I, I feel very good about that. That's all I wanted was to. That's the best uh, kind of reaction. I'm someone can. to madness with my stupid twist. <laughs> so. Well, that's awesome. Well, um, thank you very much, Stephen. Thanks for joining today. And, uh, Hopefully we'll talk more in the future and uh, yeah, get to working on your films and we'll see you at the movie theater. Sounds good, man. We'll talk soon. A nameless evil was imprisoned in a place far beyond reach. If he were ever to be released, it would spell certain doom for all existence. Is that fear I smell?